have been traveling around the country for a long time. But with the climate change taking place and eco problems piling up one after another in different places here in the Philippines, there should be more to just enjoying these places nowadays. From now on, I am going to travel in a greener way. I will be a more responsible tourist by protecting and respecting the places that I visit by just taking beautiful pictures. I will plant 10 trees in each place I visit to promote clean air. I will promote all ecotourism spots in the country and encourage other places to follow. And I will work hand in hand with all eco-warriors in our country to protect Mother Earth. I am Ruby, and I'm on a green and clean air mission. Join me as I take a detour and a different road trip. Today calls on every Filipinos to be more protective in their environments, be it for biodiversity, coastal and marine resources, or even to combat the effects of global warming and climate changes. They even pass stricter rules on forestry, land management, mining, solid waste management, clean water, and the one closest to my heart is the Philippine Clean Air Act. The right for every Filipino to breathe clean air. Now, one of the first cities who took the Philippine Clean Air Act seriously is the city of Cagayan de Oro, capital of Misamis Oriental Province. Going down now to Asia's friendliest city, Cagayan de Oro is a green haven as the city takes strict measures to plant trees everywhere. Nature has blessed this province with the riches of flora and fauna that the city has made their commitment to protect them, like the Gardens of Malasag. The Gardens of Malasag Ecotourism Village was conceptualized in 1991 as an ecology-friendly cultural habitat wherein you could learn more about the lives of ethnic groups residing in Cagayan. When Cagayanans want a quiet moment in nature, they go to the gardens of Malasag. But if they want adrenaline rush, they head up to Makahambas Hill and Gorge. Now when traveling, consider this tip. You can walk much better. If not, make sure you consider your wheel is not a pollutant. Now I'm a consensus traveler. I make sure I ride on an eco-friendly motorcycle powered by LPG. It's one of the best ways to promote clean air like this Habal Habal. This is the most popular and visited cave in Cagayan de Oro because it is a through cave, which means it can be entered at one end and exited at the other. A historical site, this is famous Makahambus underground cave is the place where Filipinos won their first battle against Americans. And as I step outside, I am even more amazed as I see the Cagayan de Oro River, the river which I am going to set foot later.
Go Go LPG Tricycle Go. Go 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 LPG Tricycle Kit. Go 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 LPG Tricycle Dual Power na, no power loss at downtime pa. Go 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 Go. Ligtas at napakadaling install. Magtungo sa RPE Marketing, 3C Summerlin Building, 2454 FB Harrison Corner, Palhalla Street, Pasay City. Ang service center ay matatagpuan sa RPE Marketing Service Shop, 2233 Aurora Boulevard, Tramo, Pasay City. A name with a very interesting meaning. Ag means water, Kagai means river. So if you put it together, Kagayan means a place with river. It cuts through Bukidnon and Iligan cities and has been declared by the Department of Tourism as the major tourist attraction for the city of Cagayan de Oro because of river trekking and whitewater rafting. The premier whitewater destination in the country, Cagayan de Oro River, is famed for the wild yet challenging rapids that quickly follow one after the other. The strong and cold 14 rapids will give you the chills as it sweeps you on both sides, testing your strength and endurance. But in the end, it's an experience you should never miss in your lifetime. Around 30 to 50 visitors trek and raft in this Cagayan River daily. This river sustains life, and that's more reason to protect it. And how do we do that? First, never throw your trash. Second, never pick up any souvenirs like stone, rocks, flowers, leaves, but instead, Let's start planting along the river bank. Did you know that Cagayan de Oro City has a special river cruise? And today, we're fortunate to be joined by two special people. One, from Saver River Lifesaver Foundation Executive Director, Dr. Huarbana. And second, Mr. Roldan Kaamino, the Operations Manager for Kagai Water Rafting. We became watchdog of the DNR because um, while doing rafting, uh, we could see illegal cutting of trees. Um, some fisher folks, locals there are um, catching fish through, in, through I illegal ways, like uh, putting up um, chemicals. Okay. So it's very dangerous because uh, even the smaller fish will be, um, you know, affected. Affected. So um, what we did was um, we took videos. They say, for example, uh, if we saw a kaingin or illegal cutting of trees. We take videos on it and um, give it to DNR. Okay. And um, good for DNR here are very active. They um, go to that area, to a certain, certain place, and um, take action on it. There are animals on the sides of the river. What kind of animals do we expect to see mm -hmm. as we go up and down the river? Yeah, there's plenty of um, very uh, rare things like. Uh, we could see the three viper snake, especially, especially snakes. Yeah, snakes. Especially right now, it's summer. When it's summer, they 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 usually go out and hang in the trees because it's colder in this area. Regarding the fishes, we have a freshwater eel, tilapia, mm -hmm. and uh, birds. We could see egret. We could see um, what they call this white-bellied eagle. Eagle. Yeah, yeah. So we but, have we have a lot of different species of animals yes. up and down, and Especially, that's why you you're watching it very well. Dr. Harbana, in layman's term, what are the ways that people 
are doing to actually protect the river. Again, the Aurora River is the uh, one of the most important, one of the natural resources that we need to take good care of. Because again, the Aurora River is very clean and there are a lot of species underwater. We have uh, 17 riverbank barangays in the downstream. We are organizing people living at the bank of the river for them to implement some programs and projects in line with the environmental management. We are able to, uh, to educate people for them to parang it's a way of life. Parang right. empowerment of the people to do the cleanup drive, the tree growing activity, and then the not throwing of garbage. For us to sustain the cleanliness of the Cagendi Oro River. How about the violators, Dr. Horbana? Yeah, every day we have our patrol boat monitoring to monitor the how, how clean the status of the river and the river bank barangays for them to police. This is the uh, corporate social responsibility of the Liceo de Cagayan University. And as the CSR of the university, we need to take good care of the river because we, our school is located at the bank of the river. Okay. Yeah, right after San Dominic, we have a lot of things to do for rehabilitation, protection, preservation, and conservation. The city is covered with trees and one major supplier of fresh and clean air comes from Mapawa Nature Park. Tucked away in the mountains of Malasan, Mapawa Nature Park is a part of a 2,450 hectare property that is protected, conserved, and sustainably managed. A natural oasis as the land is raw and real it has all sorts of bodies of land and water and more than 164 tree species. The people behind Mapawa Nature Park continuously work to educate and inspire people on the importance of caring for the environment. Visible, this is how they protected this 400-year-old Dao tree and this 250-year-old white Loa'an tree. Popular for their eco-adventure activities, I couldn't resist jumping this 25-feet cliff and rappelling down 64 feet. There's no denying the rapid progress and bustling development here in Cagayan de Oro City. Despite this, the city does not lose sight on protecting its natural environment. They work continuously with eco-warriors who work unselfishly to protect Mother Nature. One of them is architect June Palafox, a prominent Filipino architect, urban planner, environmentalist who is also working with the Paseo del Rio business project here in Cagayan de Oro City. What is best for the environment, that is his guiding principle when he builds and develops together with nature. As an urban planner, how is important is it to work with the environment? The environment, urban planning are very, very significant, very important in any kind of urban development or anything to do with the built environment. And uh, in fact, more progressive countries in the world, their ingredient of success are visionary leadership and, uh, and uh, political will. Yes. Number two is good planning, yes. good urban planning. Yes. And only third is good governance. You cannot go straight to good governance without good planning. How can we advise people like me if I want to build a home, a smaller home? Uh, what recommendation can you give us in a way that I can also help and protect my environment? Yeah, there, there are a set of criteria. Make sure the, the property is not liable to flooding. Okay. But just in case it's liable to flooding, 
we have again what I call adaptive architecture. That's right. Make your house uh, on stilts or para like a silong of our right. ancestors. So, you have the... so if there's flooding, let the silong get flooded. Right. Or right. we have also designs for floating houses. Ah, I've you, heard about yeah, that floating so, so houses. You just anchor it with your property. When the floods come, you can float it. Like Noah's Ark. That's the right. Bible. It just floated yeah. with the water. Yeah. As the water and rise. then uh, similar to 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 Cagayan San Juan. We did the uh, urban uh, planning for San Juan. In fact, we got a recognition from Germany. Ah, oh, congratulations. Uh, the smart, thank you. The smart cities of the future. What we made for San Juan, they will have three access points. One from the pedestrian street level, another one elevated walkways, okay. interconnected, so yes. that when it, even if it's flooded, people can still walk around. Yes. And a yes. third level, elevated monorail, ah. that will be interconnected with MRT EDSA and right. uh, LRT. LRT Aurora. So it will be disaster resilient. Right. And, then, and people uh, can still move yeah. around when the water is high. Yeah. And Rockwell Center, it's beside the Pacific River but never get flooded. So that's that's, true. that's mitigation. Uh -huh. Then similar to Cagayan we're doing that in the Marikina River banks. Uh -huh. We're elevating it by 21 meters because the last flooding, worst flooding in 1919 was 19 meters high. So we're elevating the whole uh, complex development. More than 19. 21 meters high. So you have two, yeah, two yeah. meters yeah. above. Yeah, with elevated walkways. So our proposal now because. Uh, it takes decades for government to do the mitigation on uh, climate change. So I've been advocating adaptive architecture. Right. I have a campaign which is one tourist, one tree. And I understand that you also have the same campaign, architect. Yeah, Can in, you tell me about it? In fact, the pro master plan communities we've been doing abroad, like in the Arabian Gulf, uh, we had specified for every car you own, you must plant 17 trees. 17. 17 trees because they have larger shopping utility vehicles. Right. Well, uh, we should have a lot of trees uh, with all the cars we yeah, have in, in the, Manila. In the Philippines, the master plan communities we do, I require 10 trees for every car. For uh, every car I they own 10 trees. 10 trees. And then uh, relatively recently, I think five years ago, I gave up $1 million in architect's fee for a six-star hotel and casino because our clients wanted us to destroy uh, 366 70 year old trees. So I returned. 70 year old trees. Yeah, 366. Cut it down. Yeah. So I returned the contract and exposed the anomaly. With your advocacy, with our uh, campaign of tree planting for every visitor or tourist that we have, one tourist, one tree, and your campaign of having 17 trees planted for every car, we should have. No problems with all of these trees giving us the oxygen uh, to breathe in and also, like what we said in the Philippine Clean Air Act, it's our right to breathe in clean air. Dedicated to protecting the natural biodiversity of their place, the city government of Cagayan de Oro has mandated the utmost protection of their environment. They are now mining free, a feat they have fought hard to protect their natural resources, and they are constantly campaigning for a greener and cleaner air. Now I have a suggestion. What if I start a campaign called One Tourist, One Tree? for all the provinces here in the country. As a tourist, let's leave a tree behind to help that place we've just visited. Cagayan has a massive reforestation now. The National Greening Program is to actually fill in 3,000 hectares of land with different kinds of trees. The question is how to properly plant a seedling. Are you aware that for every seedling that we plant, it actually sequesters 6 kilograms of carbon per year? We are now in Barangay Tablon, where they have started planting 200 different species of trees, ranging from mahogany, molave, and cherry blossom. We have now Ms. Beth Sumabong of the City Local Environment and Natural Resources Office to actually give us instructions on how to properly plant a seedling. Mom, this is the proper way of 
planting a seedling. First, press the plastic bag in order to compress the soil inside. Okay. Then slowly tear the plastic bag. Okay. Before right. we place the seedling in the hole, uh -huh. fill the hole with the top soil to provide the nutrients. So how, how deep are we supposed to dig in? Uh, so six centimeters of, uh, of depth and then you fill in with some soil. Top soil. Top soil. So first the top soil okay. then the subsoil. And then place the dried grass. This okay. is a grass mulching oh, to grass. retain the moisture of the soil and to not to harden the top soil. What type of tree are, did we actually plant this today? This is a Ms. mahogany Man. tree. And how many years does it take before we can actually harvest a mahogany tree? It takes 15 years. 15 years. This is a uh, mahogany tree that we have just planted uh, in the barangay of Tablon. And so uh, uh, now one. we are starting with the first watering of the mahogany tree and it should be watered three times a week in the next three years. After three years, the plant will actually survive on its own. Cagayanan's target to plant 1.5 million trees in one year. That's 4,109 trees in one day. How is that possible? We have the brave and feisty head of Clenro, Mr. Edwin Dial, to share with us their efforts to meet their goal. In Cagayan de Oro City, ma'am, we have seven rivers. Now, uh, we will be planting to all of, uh, of the rivers, but uh, we will be having this barangay, a pilot area, since the Punong Barangay is very much cooperative in our endeavor. So we have to, we have to choose one receptive local government unit in order for the other barangays also to, uh, to follow. What's the feature of this Umalag River uh, that made you decide to plant bamboo in this area? Actually, ma'am, we have already started planting. At this point of time, we have already planted 30 uh, linear kilometers of uh, bamboo. Why have you decided bamboo in such a very wet environment? Because bamboo, ma'am, is one of the plants that can uh, prevent erosion. How many hectares of land is required to improve microclimate? We need 100 hectares 100 to hectares. improve the carbon sequestration, to, to improve the recharging of, recharging of water, to reduce uh, the temperature. I have one suggestion for you, Mr. Dial. How about if we start a program, One Tourist, One Tree? Cagayan de Oro City holds a special place in my heart as it leads the race in the greening and protecting its natural resources. Planting and caring for trees is a way of life for them. It challenges me more to travel around the Philippines to encourage others to do the same. I'm Ruby. Join me on my next road trip protecting Mother Earth.